Hi guys, welcome back. Scanlink here and we're off for more of Freedom Planet. In the last episode, we finished Mila's wacky ending of a story. No, I don't know how to put it to be fair. But we also had the true finale of the Let's Play because we finished all three stories upon finishing Mila's. And with that, we did get an achievement. Clear all Mila's stages, Spirit of the Hound. But we're going to be covering the achievements in a moment. Because in this episode, we're covering the gallery. That's right. We're going to be checking every single one of these cards, opening them all up, and, you know, just having a look at all the artwork, all the um, stuff like that that we've unlocked throughout the Let's Play thus far. Not going to go for 100%. I uh, don't know where all of them are located, but this is probably the best I've ever done since last time when I wiped my entire, you know, cards and achievements. Even though I wasn't connected to Steam for most of the time, being offline and all that, none of my, you know, achievements that I have right here actually got carried over. And they still haven't updated, so I don't know what to do about that. I'm probably going to have to re-unlock them again and just, you know, wipe the slate clean of the achievements, reconnect it, and then do it all again that way. Which is fine. Which is fine. Just gives me more reason to play this awesome game. Hopefully, though, without any glitches or I getting annoyed. Then again, probably talking puts me off a little bit, trying to explain stuff, and falling over my speech when I do get annoyed. And, like I said, throughout the whole entirety of Mila's story. I wasn't trying to find glitches, but that just means there's more stuff to patch, and that means the game just stays more relevant. Anyway, enough about all that. We got a lot of cards here. I even got all of them in one level. And that was Trap Hideout, and that was the only level that we could go through twice. Almost every other level, we had three times to go through, and I didn't actually find all of them. Yeah, I don't know why that's a thing. In fact, I missed the first one in Thermal Base. I feel like I actually want to try and find that first. But we are going to try and go into um, uh, time attack, so I might choose that level to speedrun or something, I don't know. But I was going to try one of the earlier levels because of it. And apparently, Aqua Tunnel is listed third, even because, like, you know, with, La with Lilac and Carol, you play through Dragon Valley first, which would be this level, and then Relic Maze. But isn't that supposed to take place for Relic Maze since, you know... Mila plays through Aqua Tunnel instead of Dragon Valley. I don't know. Anyway. In fact, we got a lot of the cards through that level just by, like, playing with her the first time. But now I'm just putting this off. Let's start opening these up. So, for Dragon Valley, we have card number two. The main menu. Which is... Well, that. So, that's a thing. Oh, whoops. Close card. Oh, well, I can, oh, I can actually reseal them if I want to. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know I could do that. I should have done that to begin with. Oh, well. Well, let's just open them up all anyway. So, we've got the main menu there. Card number six of Dragon Valley. We've got Dragon Valley Part 2. Very mystical. Gives me Land of the Dragon vibes from Kingdom Hearts 2, which makes sense. Because, you know, Land of the Dragons, Dragon Valley, Lilac. Makes sense. This card, card number eight. I am invincible! We all know this tune. This tune's like probably one of the better tunes in the game, to be fair. It's a shame that it's so short. So yeah, you can buy the um, official soundtrack off of Steam. And I believe only the Steam version as well. Maybe it is available on other systems, I'm not too sure. Probably not the Wii U though. Don't know about the PS4, but I do know you can get the official soundtrack through Steam. Because I believe the game doesn't allow you to listen to every tune. I might be wrong about that, but like I said, I haven't grabbed every card before. So, what's this one? One up. Jingle. That's cool. Yeah, if you stop the music as well that was playing, it's just silent. You gotta find that tune if you want it back, unless you want to exit and go back into gallery again. So what's the number two of this level? Uh, Relic Maze. Here comes trouble. I think this is the music that plays when uh, talk as a shield duck is getting interrogated by Serpentine. You didn't say please! Lilac's Treehouse? Yep. You know, if the game was more free roaming or had a hub world, I would have pictured Lilac's Treehouse to be the hub world. This kind of had, it kind of like, the music fits that, you know? Chase scene? Yep. It's an ambush! Relic Maze 1? Not the best music, but then we do have the better music. Relic Maze 2. One of the best tunes in the game, in my opinion. Ok, 
Come on, get to the best bit. Here we go. Alright, I won't do I won't do that for too long, so apparently I'm turning deaf, so it's my bro. Major boss battle. Rolling around at the speed of sound. Got places to go, gotta follow my rainbow. Okay, just stop. Oh, we got some carol artwork. Let's have a look at that. A little bit pixelated due to the uh, resolution of the game, being obviously at native 720p. But, of course, you can find like the non-pixelated uh, artwork properly drawn. Um, online, so that's perfectly fine. But it's still nice that you can actually see it in the game as well. It's nice that it's like a bonus for going out your way to find them. So get listen to this music a little bit more. Oh, we got a sound clip that we can listen to. <laughs> Feel my power. Yeah, actually, that's something I want to talk about on the sound. Um, if you're able to, like, find the files on the PC version of the game, you can actually access, like, the sound clips, but they're all a sound file that I can't actually play unless I change them to Windows Media Player type files, which is kind of weird because it's like it wants to open up on a program that I don't know, so it's kind of weird, but I'm guessing that's just because that's how the game detects it, so that's kind of a thing. Sadly though, even though that's more of a sound effect that should play the music, it stops the music, which is kind of annoying. So on to Aqua Tunnel now. I like this music. Like I said, it's got a bit of a tropical feel to it, but you wouldn't expect to have that like in a sewer. But then again, it's like the only true water level in the game, I guess. So, other than, you know, the second half of Thermal Base. What else have we got? Mila? Look how cute she is! I don't like I don't know if I like the like, lower half of her dress though, because it's like it's a bit weird, really, like, if you, like, look at, like, coloured artwork. It's like, she's got a bit of a black bit in the nether region area, but then her actual part of her white dress, like, exposes her inner thighs, but then goes round to hal halfway down her legs. I mean, it doesn't look so bad, considering that her legs are white fur anyway, along with the white dress, but it's, it's it does give a bit of a mystical design as well, though, because, you know, she has, quote-unquote, magical abilities, which are more like psychic abilities, in my opinion, but you know what I mean. So it kind of fits the theme of her character as well. But I don't know how I feel about that. She just looks cute though. Shiny. I think that's what she says when she digs up something. But I might have been talking over every time that that happens. So I apologise for that. But there you go. There's the clip. Shiny. Mahjong theme. I haven't unlocked this. But once we get into uh, time attack or whatever. I will show. I will, I will make mention of it. At least I got the music before accessing the actual mode. So yeah, you might be wondering, why is Mahjong in this game? Well, I believe Mahjong is like a Chinese kind of game, and the game also, uh, well, the game of Freedom Planet has Chinese themes, like with dragons, pandas, and some of the music and design of the levels and stuff, plus the yin and yang symbol for the bonus levels. Yeah, kind of makes sense once you think about all the actual symbolism. And yet the cards look like something straight out of Mario. Enter Brevin. It's the intro music! Yeah, it's the intro. What else have we got? King of Shui Gong. Yep. The person who gets beheaded at the very beginning of the game before you even reach the title screen. That's what he looks like. I don't think I've actually seen this online. I think it's the first time I've actually seen this particular image. Hmm. Nice. Oh, I just realised, the music's actually going a lot longer than what we would actually normal, normally hear. Oh, oh, I didn't think it would actually, like, continue doing that. I guess this is part of the music that you wouldn't normally get to hear, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, if you've also noticed that when it comes to, like, music tracks, it's a, it's music. If it's, like, artwork at this point, it's a fortune cookie. And if it's, like, a sound clip, like this... Which is what she says most of the time when she finishes a level. Um, it's just a little uh, sound icon that you would normally have at the corner of your desktop. 
Well, for Windows. I don't know about Mac. I don't use those. Meet the team! Fortunite 1. Which makes sense because it's the level that we're on. Zao's jingle every time that he gets plus 5 of anything. Or if you win against the slots. But you win every time anyway, so whatever. Fortune Street 2. Target World. I don't think I recognise this. No, wait, hang on. I think Target World is also something to do with Time Attack. That might be why, so we'll keep that on tabs for now. That might be why I don't recognise it. Serpentine's Laugh. Well then, Commander. Brev in yo hizzle. I have no idea why Brevin's like first more ominous theme is called something so slang like. Brevin in yo hizzle for shizzle diddly dizzle. I don't get it. For something so ominous, it has such a wacky name. Sky Battalion, though, is pretty epic. I'll give it that. Prince Dale Battle! Hell yes! Had a bit of a delay there. Best theme in the game. Shmup stage, that's the bonus level. Which is also the bonus room music. Okay. I, for some reason that I don't for some reason that caught me off guard. Lala I won't give up. I won't give up. Sounds a little bit weird out of place when it's not matched with the character, but you know. Not today. What you buzz like you? Not today. This is the part where we blow up. Hit me if you can. That's a lot clearer. That's because that was the the um, the comment that she makes if you hide on the ledge against Spade. That's the taunt and that's also the achievement. And I believe that's the only time you hear it. I swear she said it somewhere else, but I can't remember. Royal Palace Jail. That stupid panda girl. Jade Creek 1. Ah, I'll work with Nira. How fitting I've got this music play right now. I think this is quite early concept to be fair, because she looks a little bit different, a little bit more girlish, a bit more cute, and a bit instead of the more stone-like, more rigid design that we have during gameplay, but then again that could be just me and I'm not seeing the resemblance. I think this is quite early designs for Nero actually, so that's just me though. I might be wrong, so don't take so take take what I say with a grain of salt. Prince Dale intro too. So you have chosen death. How pathetic! I guess I missed his first clip. Damn it! Wait, why do we get that during Jade Creek? Why not in this level? Like round about here? That's a bit odd. All right, strange. Jade Creek two. Like I said, not the best music in my opinion. I've got you now. That's when he dashes in for the boss battle, but then again you can just smack him if once he announces himself. Serpentine might be a better idea if you didn't say anything like the slippery snake you are and snipe me from behind. Just saying. Get over here, you bug eyed freak. Rude And I guess the other two would be his other two that he would say. It's Brevin time. If you guys know, this is the music that I use every time that we're about fighting, like, for the end card of Final Dre Dreadnought 3, so. Game over. Now you can actually hear the whole tune without actually having to wait out the timer. But we're not going to have that depressing music. Well, I guess actually we can put this music back on while having a look at syntax. Yeah, we actually get a wider image for this this time. 
Shading is actually pretty decent on this. It actually doesn't look so bad. Like, you don't really notice the jaggedness because of the checkerboard, like, shading that's done. And it's all drawn by, like, pencil as well. It's really good. What else have we got here? Syntax, intrusion detected. Intrusion detected. Please remove yourself from the facility. Yeah, you thought that was two separate sound clips? Nope, they're just one. And, yep. Makes sense that we find that in that level, because that's what she says when she first but finds us. Normal base part two. Nothing too dramatic there. Aquatic boss battle. I swear that's named something else on my desktop that I used for Spade. Because I always associate this music with Spade, to be fair. But actually, yeah, that would actually make sense, because isn't Trap Hideout or whatever it's called, the, the Red Scarf's base, in um, Shang 2's sewer system. Plus it's the music that we also hear when we fight the angular fish as Mila in Aqua Tunnel, again, in the sewers. Yeah, that would make sense actually, never mind. Ignore me, but we've got Bird Guard here, which, as we all know, he actually appears! What?! What?! I never knew that! You see that?! That doesn't happen with any other, anyone else's like sound clips, does it? Get over here, you bugger! No, it doesn't. I did not realise he would actually appear. I, that is a card that I must have never grabbed. Oh, that's a surprise. Yep. Please remain still during the incineration process. Wow. Thank you. I thought I saw a glitch when I saw that happen, but no, that's actually part of that card. So this card has more functionality than any of the other cards thus far. That is so weird. Anyway, sorry, I, to I talked over that one. Let me play it again for you. Please remain still during the incineration process. There Thank we go. You. Oh, then, then again, she pauses, and that's what caught catch me off guard. Imposter engaged. Imposter engaged. Engaged. Blah. <laughs> 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 I need tissue. Imposter and Kate engaged. That's an outtake! And it looped! Okay! I didn't realise outtakes would be in the card bonuses as well. Because, alright, I'm not going to show them in this video, I'll have to obviously show them in a separate video, but then again a lot of other people have done it already anyway, including Dawn on her Let's Play through uh, Lilac Story. If you hold like up and the B button, because you know in Mila's case she has A, B, C, C being like, you know, the A button being the special attacks and whatnot. If you hold B and up, in certain cutscenes, it would play the outtake first and then continue as normal. And the game would actually like animate that with the characters like they just messed up their lines and the game itself is like a play. So, that's kind of funny, but I did not realise there could actually be outtakes as card pickups in the game itself. I thought you would have to press that but that special code, and that's the only way you could experience them. Hmm, alright then. <laughs> that, as well, caught me off guard. Seriously, like, within two bloody items, the game's caught me off guard twice. Wow. I really want to go grab all the cards now. Time attack, which we haven't done yet, so... Oh, well, it's the character select screen anyway, so whatever. Trap hideout one. Trap hideout two. So that's pretty basic, thus far. Oh, we got some artwork of Spade, there we go. Look at him just brandishing that Ace of Clubs. No, not Ace of Clubs. <laughs> Ace of Spades. I like how I try to correct myself and yet I was right the first time. Ugh. It's got those shades on his... Head, which makes sense, but I actually like that as a design choice because, as I do, I, I am aware in the re in uh, the sequel, he actually does wear his glasses, and I don't like that. To be fair, I actually liked it when he had them off, like where they are right now in this image. So, probably just a design choice I'm not a fan of, but whatever. Sound effect for the wood shields. These are probably going to be all the shields. The earth shield, which is the gem that attracts the gems. Water shield. Fire shield. 
and the metal shield, which is a nice guitar twang. Yeah. Which also allows us to walk on spikes, actually. Talk concept. I like how it says concept and not just art. It just says, it, because all the others just say spade, syntax, nearer. But this one says talk concept. So let's put that back on for now so we have some background music. Oh, right. Wow, I didn't actually expect this to be coloured in as well. This is what was used during the animation for the Kickstarter trailer. Which is where I took the footage to make the intro in the first place, with permission from Dawn, so that's a thing. But yeah, that that's uh, that's exactly where you you see this design of talk actually animated and coloured and whatnot. I didn't actually expect this to be coloured in. So this is a premium. That's pretty sweet. That's pretty sweet for a bonus. Right, we're almost at the end here. So we've got Pangu Lagoon, which we only had one playthrough, by the way, with Lilac. So it's a Lilac exclusive level. General Gong. Doesn't have his shield. Interesting. You don't normally see him without his shield. But there he's just doing like a nice shoulder bash with his spiky pole drawn, which makes sense. I mean, get more damage off your shoulder bash because of that. Yeah, I've got no complaints on that. But I've got no nothing else to say about it either. Pangu Lagoon 2, so of course I get the music tracks. And for the final level, Battle Glacier, because there's nothing in the final Dreadnought. Got Battle Glacier, level, um, music 1. Oh, okay, we get the final Dreadnought stuff during Battle Glacier, I get. That actually kind of makes a bit of sense. Let me guess, this is Dreadnought 2. Oh no, Dreadnought 2 is that one, so this is 3. Final boss. Oh, so the so Battle Glacier is just all the music's at the end of the game, basically. That makes sense. Epilogue. The Kingdom Stone has been saved. And the Freedom Planet theme, which you hear on the title screen. As well as the credits. Well, I unlocked all my favourite tunes, and I also unlocked the main theme of the game. Which is, oddly enough, the last card in the game. Hmm. Alright then. But yeah, that is all of the cards that we have found during our free playthroughs through the story. That's pretty cool. So, uh, you know what? We will have that music playing again. And we are now going to go to the achievements. So what achievements did we get? We got Dragon Power, Call of the Wildcat, and Spirit of the Hound, which is just beating all the characters... Basically just beating all the characters' stories at least once. Nothing too dramatic there. Dragon Psycho Finish, and... End a boss with the Dragon Cyclone. Dragon Boost, end the boss with a Dragon Boost. You will actually get this at the end of Mila's story if you didn't kill any enemies with a Dragon Boost. Because the Dragon Boost actually finishes off Brevin, and for whatever reason it actually counts if it's done in Mila's story. So keep that in mind. Then we have the Wild Kick finish to beat uh, End a boss with Carol's Wild Kick, which is the f well, I kept calling it the Fury Kick or the Flurry Kick. Her invincibility attack, effectively. Her version of a dragon boost. Motorcycle finish. End the boss with a motorcycle. Doesn't matter how, what move you use, it will still be the motorcycle finish. Pattern block finish. End the boss with a block for Mila. And super shield burst. Defeat an enemy with Mila's mega laser, effectively. Lilac the switch skipper. That was pretty much what I, sh I showed off in the very first episode. You just have to dragon boost at like a... Uh, le an up leftward angle while standing on the switch to boost past the door without pushing the block on top. Disco Fever, bust some moves out in Fortune Knight, just wait for the idle animation to happen when you're standing next to a disco ball, that's pretty much what it is. Doesn't matter who you do it with, any of the characters, I don't even know if Talk has animations for that actually, well I guess we'll find that out when we get the players in by clocking our version back. Of course, I'll back up on my save data just in case. Card Collector and Trap Hideout. Collect all 10 cards, Trap Hideout. There are other achievements for this for every other level. So, well, other than the final Dreadnought levels, of course. But, you know, so that means there's about, I believe, 10 levels. Because four levels of Final Dreadnought and there are 14 levels. So, I think there's 10 versions of this achievement. But I only got the one of them. And I came close to another as well, which really did annoy me. But, you know. Rolling Stones. Get a boulder to wrap around the screen. You know, just... Dodge them, pretty self-explanatory. Push block KO, destroy the eye, the eye golem in the relic maze with a push block. 
which is the easiest way to do it as well, it's also the fastest. Or bone, no brain, just let him kill itself, that little wood, uh, bone bird with the jewel. Preemptive Strike 2, destroy Prince Daryl's shield before he finishes his monologue, so you don't have to hurt him, you just gotta destroy his shield. With Mila and Carol, pretty easy, with Lilac, not so much. Treasure Hunter, dig into a, into a treasure spot as Mila, the game does give you uh, prompts right below your energy bar, I wasn't paying attention most of the time, but I did see it in editing. So I missed quite a lot of those, but you only got to do it once. Ledge Taunt, as I've said, with Ly with Lilac's fight against Spade and Scarp Italian, just down the ledge, and you'll hear that clip hit me if you can. And Mila Unlocked, clear Redic Maze as any character once you beat the game up. And as I've said before, and what from what we've seen at the beginning of the game, at the beginning of the Let's Play, excuse me, even if you wipe and all your achievements off, if you've already played through, if you've still got a save file where it's past Relic Maze, this will stay unlocked, so yeah, can't really avoid that, so that's a thing as well. Now, before anything else, I'm going to slap on the top of the screen the notification for all the uh, uh, the trophies on the PS4 version that I would have earned with the amount of achievements I have on screen right now. I think that's sufficient time and that's it for the gallery so you think I would be done here right now considering that we just you know spent 25 minutes in the gallery but we're not done yet I want to squeeze in the time attack mode we can choose any character that we want and I'm gonna go with Lilac we get to choose any of the levels here to well beat our times the crystals that we collect the times that we that we got during the story mode they're basically saved as the highest scores at that point as well you can even do it in classic mode as well but i'm not too sure if cards are available while doing this so we'll try dragon valley quickly i'm not going to do the whole level i'm just going to like you know just you know showcase it off and whatnot so let's just get running here get a bit of gameplay in here it's weird seeing my energy bar this huge again after playing as Mila for like a whole story because you kind of get used to having like no health and I buggered that up. But what I'm trying to experiment right now is if the uh, cards are actually obtainable during time trial mode. Because otherwise it might just be better to play on classic mode. and just Or choose an existing save file and just choose a level to replay. In fact there's a one up here. So I'll grab that. I don't think I've actually been this way. I'm surprised I didn't find a card though. Unless that is where a card should be but there is no card. Aha! There's actually a card I didn't grab! And yes, that does mean that you can grab cards in um, time, tra time attack mode. So you know what? I just grabbed that. I'm going to check that. I'm not going to add that to the totals of the previous episode, obviously. But I am going to check that right now. What did we just grab? Wait, wait. Oh, here it is. What did we grab? Dragon Valley 1! <laughs> you know what? That's fair. That is fair. Alright, now, the thing I was going to actually talk about beforehand... Let me go to Lilac here. Shang Mu Academy. You know, where Fortune Street is located. Um, other than that, all the levels are pretty much the same here. And you have access to all the levels that that character could access. You can't access levels that you wouldn't have access to during normal gameplay. Other than Shang Mu Academy, this is the thing I want to talk about. And this is probably where we'll hear the target thing. If we choose this in time attack mode... Break the targets. We have a menu! We have a load of stages to do, and I haven't done any of these before. Basically what these are is just training levels, effectively. You can, like, mess about with a character, figure out their moves, and just, you know, hit all the targets. So it's a break the targets kind of stage. And I'm just going to run on the spot to build up some speed. So hit the gongs. Great goal. The amount of gongs that you need to hit are on the uh, top, right, uh, top right corner of the screen, and you are time to hit them all. And there we go, we've just done one already. And we unlocked the next one. I'm going to try that one again, see if I can go do that a little bit faster. Oh, and by the way, look how much health I have. I only have three petals. What the hell is that? There we go, that was a lot better. That was a lot cleaner as well. Let's go try and let's go try another one with Lilac. I'm going to go this way. There we go. So yeah, just got to break all the targets, and there you go. I don't know if they're 
the same for every character, so I guess we'll go check that out now. So let's uh, back up and go to Carol this time. So every character's getting a uh, bit of a showcase here. Let's go Shigmu Academy again. Okay, so the levels are the same. Oh, I've already done it with Carol. Okay, I didn't realise that. Hey, I did it faster than I did it before anyway, so it wasn't a waste of time. <laughs> Yeah, a waste of four seconds. Yeah, so the levels are the same, it's just how fast can you do it with that character. Of course, some characters may be better than others, some characters may be slower than others, but gives you a nice incentive to like try and improve your score as much as possible. So I guess I'll just do the third stage with uh, Mila, I guess, unless I have to unlock it with her. No, what we're doing, let's do Carol. Right, so let's back up and let's do it with Mila as well. Might as well be fair. That might actually be easier for her, because she can shoot. Yeah, we have to do all the levels as such. So we'll just do the first two levels of every character. I just realised I had to press the, the right button in order to do it. And I'm actually missing these. Oh my god. The character you would think would have the easiest time doing it, because they have a slight range on their projectile. I miss every bloody shot. Go me. It's nice that you can actually jump, like... And get ready to move and build up your speed before it actually allows you to move proper. But there we go. So yeah, you got like a nice bunch of levels. I think Torque has his own as well. Torque has access to this. Which means that you can actually like use his guns to get really super high scores. But of course, I'll show that off when we're playing as Torque as well. If it's available. But yeah, that's Shangmu Academy, effectively. Just a break the target stage instead of a time attack stage. It's just stuck in here because I guess they didn't know where else to put it. And I believe if you get all of the... If I back up again. I press the wrong button. There we go. Alright, let's back up again. Now, let me go back to the gallery one final time. I believe if you collect every card here, or if you collect the card that is required, you get access to the Mahjong minigame. It's basically basic Mahjong... Nothing too dramatic there. You could probably just download it for free for any of your Windows PCs anyway. But it's a nice little bonus. So I can't complain about that too much. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this bonus video. We've covered pretty much everything in the game. We've covered up all of the stuff that we grabbed during the Let's Play. Including that one card just out of experimentation of trying to find them in time attack mode and stuff like that. I guess the only thing I can show you now is if we choose an existing file. We pretty much just get a stage and just continue from continue the story from that point. So we can go back in time effectively. But you won't lose your progress on your file. Even though it may raise your death and time count. I'm not too sure. But I feel like you have to do a complete new run of story mode in order to get enough gems. In order to get that 5000 gem achievement. That's I think is the only thing. By the way, Mila took me the longest. Did it take me the longest with this? Yeah, definitely. Carol took shorter but I took longer this time around with my files. But yeah. That is, uh, that's all the bonuses I can talk about the game I can show off, and, uh, yeah. So I think in the next episode, guys, bonus episode-wise, if I can make it work, is that we will be playing as talk by clocking our system back to the beta. Ac uh, is it called the beta? Or was it called the early access version? I can't remember. But there is an option in Steam where if you bring it down, you can access the beta mo versions of the game. You can clock it back to different versions, and I believe if we clock to the right one, we can play as Spade. Maybe, look, we can maybe, yeah, we might be able to even play as Spade as well as Talk. I meant to say Talk. But you get what I'm saying. So, obviously you can't do that on the Wii U or the PS4 version, only the PC version. It was the first version of the game, therefore it's going to be the most superior in terms of functionality. But anyway, enough of me blabbering. In the next episode, guys, we're going to try and play as Talk, maybe even Spade if we're lucky. With that, see you guys next. <laughs>